one thing that's kind of fun to do in math is, is as we as we go through, a lot of times we're presented with rules that we just memorize and we use. Um, this is from our chapter two, which really chapter two should just be really called the search for zeros. And imagine that we've just gone through the rational zero test and we've come up with a list of maybe 30 po positive or negative possible zeros. And we start the whole synthetic process and really frustrating because some people guess the right Rash, possible rational zero early and sometimes you might have to try six or seven times before you come up with one. It would sure be nice if we could kind of trim down our list. The upper bound rule says that if we synthetically divide a number through and all of our values that we get below the line are non-negative, so we get zeros or positives, then the number we've synthetically divided is an upper bound. In this instance, I'm going to divide two a potential upper bound through 1, negative 2, 5, 3, and we'll explain this. Bring down the 1 times 2, 2, add 0, 2 times 0, 0, add 5, 5, 2 times 5, 10, 13. Now, these are all non-zero entries here, therefore, the rule says we can't have a 0, all of our zeros would be located to the left of 2. So why does that make sense? Well, imagine putting a number in here bigger than 2. If I put in a number bigger than 2, so you can imagine maybe 3, what happens in this process? This 1 stays the same, but this 1 would become 3 times 1, making this number bigger. No matter what value bigger than 2 is, I'm going to get a number the two that I use, I'm going to get a number, that number times one, I'm going to get a number bigger than two, which means negative two plus a number bigger than two would be bigger than zero. And then when I multiply that by a number bigger than two, I'm going to get a bigger result here, giving me yet a bigger result here, multiplied by a number bigger than two here, a bigger result. We just progressively get bigger. Now, if we consider end model behavior of this function, we know eventually it's going up. What this tells us is by time we get to 2, and in this case we were at 213, every value after that is bigger. So we have no more zeros in that direction. So it kind of makes sense. The bigger number I put in in this case, the bigger my bottom row is going to get. All right, let's consider then the lower bound issue. Get rid of some of these guys. got to love technology and we will go with dividing into that's a potential lower bound negative 2 is suggested what happens I get 1 times negative 2 positive 4 let's correct that sorry I get 1 times negative 2 negative 2 add those together negative 4 times negative 2 positive 8 13 negative 26 negative 23. Now, the rule for lower bound states, if we divide a negative, synthetically divide a negative, and all the values below alternate in signs, and again, zero could be positive or negative, if the, if the signs alternate, then we have a lower bound, suggesting that there might not be a zero to the left of negative two. Okay, let's see why that makes sense. I'm going to use kind of a contradictory term. I'm going to refer to negative 3 as a bigger but negative number, a bigger negative number. If I use a bigger neg negative number, this number stays the same. But what happens to this number? I get 1 times a bigger negative. This is more negative, making my sum in this row more negative. When I multiply negative 4 by a bigger negative number, it becomes positive and bigger than 8, making this result bigger than 13, times a number bigger than negative, or times a bigger negative, like negative 3, making this number bigger negative yet, making this result, or smaller actually, making this result smaller, more negative. So what that's telling us is when I put in negative 2 and I'm at negative 23 down here, we know end model behavior wants to go down, Anything to the left of 2 is going to produce a more negative number, a number further 
down in the graph. We've reached our critical mass. There may be some wiggling on the way in here, and that's left for another discussion, but the only place I can possibly have zeros is through here. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at one more and see if we make some sense out of this. Okay, so now it's suggested, is one an upper bound? Let's see, I'm going to run one through this guy. I get one, negative one, four, five, negative eight, three. Bring down the one times one, one. That is zero times one, zero. Four times one, four, five times one, nine, nine times one, 9, negative 8, 9, 1, times 1, 3. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Times 1, 1, 3 plus 1, 4. Which, since none of these are negative, implies that 1 is an upper bound in our search for zeros. No sense in going there. At 1, I'm up at 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm up at 4. What happens when I put in a number bigger than 1? This stays the same, but this gets bigger making this bigger, bigger, all the way through. So our results have to end up being bigger than four and progressively bigger than that. And model behavior says this is going to rise to the right. We've reached critical mass where we're rising to the right. Let's look at lower bound. I think I have room here. One, negative one, four, five, negative eight, three. It's suggested that maybe Negative 2 is a lower bound. 1 times negative 2, add them. 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 Positive 22 times negative 2, negative 44, negative 41. So by time I'm to negative 2, Put a little break in the line here. We are way down here at negative 44, and I'm suggesting we've reached critical mass. We're heading down. And again, why is that? If I put in negative 3, for instance, when I multiply here, more negative, making this more negative, making this more positive, making this result more positive, times a negative, more negative, making this more negative, times a negative, bigger positive, making this bigger positive, times a negative, bigger and negative, making this bigger and negative. Our results have to be going down there. So that's a little debunking of the upper lower bound test, so, so perhaps it makes some sense. Again, in the age of graphing calculators, not maybe as useful as it used to be, but if you are doing a hand test and you've got a big list of rational zeros, it would sure be nice I don't have to look at anything to the right of one and to the left of negative two.